you still stick to the mantra that the deputy president is a truthful man, and I can confirm for sure he is. Welcome. Thank you, Aziri. Please be seated. Um, the cabinet secretary for health, Susan Nakumicha, the president of the International Society of Pharmaceutical Engineering, <laughs> Professor Lisa Pont, the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, Dr. Machogu, I'm under you for the time we are here. <laughs> the CEO of the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya, professionals and uh, practitioners, good afternoon. Um, let me read what my people and I have put together, then I can say a few things from my heart. <laughs> let me start by congratulating the Pharmaceutical Society of Kenya as you turn 60 years. 60 years is a major milestone for an institution as it is for an individual. To build an institution that sustained itself for 60 years is not easy. It requires people of strength and character who care and who go above and beyond the call of duty. On behalf of our president, his sentence Dr. William Ruto, I wish to acknowledge PSK for the immense contribution you have made to the health sector since independence. You have worked with our nations most at risk in the fight against this disease, one of the three enemies of the nation identified by our founding fathers after we gained freedom from colonialists. Distinguished professionals, our celebration today is not so much a festivity but a solemn occasion to pause and look back at the 60-year journey, an opportunity to reflect on challenges and what we can do better, a chance to refocus and give priority to strategies, to strategies that contribute to the health sector and to the Ruto administration's plan of transforming Kenya. Under the plan, universal health coverage and, and manufacturing feature prominently. The government banks on universal health coverage, UHC, which was unveiled during the 60th Mashujaa Day celebrations last year to ease access to quality health care for all. In manufacturing, Kenya is setting its sights on becoming a leading regional hub for the production of medicines, and healthcare supplies to reduce costs and ensuring accessibility to all citizens. The theme of this conference, Pharmacists Transforming Policy, Practice and Patient Safety, is therefore spot on and resonates with the ambitions of the Kenya Kwanzaa Administration as well as the aspirations of our people. Distinguished professionals and all those present, to achieve the quality that we seek in UAC, the society is a crucial actor in instilling professional standards. This is besides supporting other agencies like the Ministry of Health, Pharmacy and Poisons Board, the Veterinary Medicine Directorate, among others, in ensuring products are safe secure, effective, accessible, and affordable for all. That is why we are expected, that is why we are excited that among other legal and policy frameworks, PSK has ignited and sustained a robust discourse among professionals, other sector actors, and the public on the Kenya Drugs Authority Bill 2022. 
Among other matters, the bill proposes the, the establishment of a single a regulatory body on human and animal medicines in fulfillment of the Health Act 2017. This is important as we strive to consolidate and strengthen our regulatory systems in the supply chain. Furthermore, this move will help us meet the World Health Organization's maturity level three standards of a stable, well-functioning and integrated regulation system while similarly boosting the competitiveness of locally manufactured medicines. <laughs> Distinguished professionals and participants, in this conference of global representation, we are creating and strengthening our local, regional and international networks of addressing the menace of substandard and counterfeit drugs and other medical supplies that threaten the lives of our people. We cannot deliver universal health coverage when up to 30% of drugs are fake. We cannot spar local manufacturing when fake and counterfeit drugs are scooping up to 15 billion Kenya shillings of the market share. The Pharmacy and Poisons Board, the Veterinary Medicine Directorate in partnership with other agencies must protect the market to attract and boost investor confidence in manufacturing. This is through an intensive, coordinated and sustained crackdown on crooked suppliers and dealers. I hope they are not in this conference. <laughs> this will drive economic growth in diverse ways. Furthermore, a vibrant manufacturing sector will reduce our dependence on imports, enhance self-reliance besides preparing us to a net exporter of medicines, especially to our African sister states. This is how we'll take a bite of the over 2.6 trillion US dollars annual expenditure of our continent, which currently imports between 70 and 80% of medicines. With Kenya spending up to 550 million US dollars annually in importation, a strong manufacturing sector will remarkably reduce foreign currency expenditure. Additionally, this will build and fortify the supply chain resilience and reduce the negative impacts of global disruptions as witnessed during the COVID-19. Distinguished professionals and participants, the fight against fake and counterfeit drugs goes hand in hand with the war on drug abuse. Our administration has, ident has intensified the war on drugs and substance abuse, and in doing so, has adopted a robust collaboration between and among state and non-state agencies. Drug, drug abuse is rampant in our society today. Drugs are also used by our children, brothers, sisters, even our parents. The young people are, unfortunately, at the highest risk. Regrettably, some of your members, some seated here, have been complicit in this vice, facilitating the sale of controlled medicines in contravention of prescribed protocols to the youth. I urge the society members at your individual level to join us in the war on drugs. <laughs> Admittedly, there are cases of pharmacists leasing out their licenses at a fee or leaving behind their licenses to running pharmacies and chemists. We know of some pharmacies who operate back-end services, trading in counterfeit medicines. Such practices erode public trust in your profession, and I believe that the intervention of this society is critical in stopping these undesirable practices. You have the power and the clout to censure your members while still protecting them when they are under threat or attack for upholding the professional ethos. <laughs> this delicate balance serves as the greatest test of professional body identity. Our professional bodies often narrowly focus 
on economic self-advancement, which they have a right to do, but which in the end has led to the neglect of the public good. We often see not of the public to whom they serve, but their members who abuse their professional positions and compromise their oaths of office. Of office. I challenge the PSK to raise this bar, not only for the good of the profession, but for the country in general. Continuously demand a higher standard of yourself and your members. We call for a joint approach between the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, the Veterinary Medicine Directorate, PSK, the Kenya Pharmaceutical Association, the Veterinary Board of Kenya, and other relevant agencies in aiding and regulated access and use. I request the pharmacy and the veterinary subsectors to work with the government in saving and sobering our nation, especially the youth. Distinguished professionals and participants, in conclusion, let me again underscore the importance of professional bodies in achieving national aspirations at a Vision 2030 and the Ruto Administration's plan for a better and prosperous Kenya. I believe this conference provides a good opportunity for you to engage and deliver it on various futuristic topics, regional and indeed a global focus. I wish you fruitful deliberations and looking forward to actionable outputs of this conference that will transform the health sector. I now declare the International Scientific Conference 2024 officially open. As a I want to say thank you very much for inviting me. I know you wanted to listen to me. Mm. First and foremost, I want to express our government's respect for professionals and professional bodies. Our professionals are very important for the development of our country and the well-being of the Kenyan people. The years you took through school up to university are not in vain. They must count for something in supporting humanity and improving the lives of the people of Kenya. Pharmacists play a very important role in the health sector and doesn't matter how big a hospital is, how experienced the doctors are, how modern the equipment is, how good is the nursing care, how clean is the hospital, how expeditious is the billing system, without a strong support of a working pharmacy, you don't have a hospital. And all treatments, the diagnosis, the theater, whatever it is, at the end of it, after admission, the final stop before you go home is a pharmacy. That tells you the importance of your profession. You are really the backbone of our health sector. And therefore, it is critical that you must be very professional. You must be very professional. Because if you dispense the wrong drug, the whole value chain 
from, from a consultation through diagnosis and tests and all that if, the if you dispense the wrong drug all that effort is in vain. We therefore call for a very professional and robust body that you are members to support our health system. I want to say that I'm leading the fight against drugs and substance abuse. And one of our weak points are pharmacists and chemists. Some properly licensed and run by professionals. Yet, they dispense drugs that are supposed to be dispensed against prescription over the counter. We have a lot of young people, even in this town of Mombasa, getting a lot of syrups and mixing them with other things to get a very dangerous combination that is harmful to our children. I want to call upon all those professionals who run pharmacies and chemists to live up to your oath and just do the right thing. Please don't dispense drugs over the counter that are supposed to be dispensed upon a prescription. Again, let us put a good record of all drugs that we dispense. That is for licensed establishments. Again, there are very many other quacks who have opened pharmacies and chemists that are not licensed and that are not run by people who are professional. I want to request that you, our society, works with us and we are willing to pair you up with our county security and intelligence teams to crack down on unlicensed pharmacists and chemists, shut them down, destroy the drugs, and take the people who are running them to jail where they belong. And let's start with here in Mombasa. We have a very good county team here led by the county commissioner who are very active. And county commissioner, I really want to thank you and your team for what you have done to run the drug barons here in Mombasa out of town. Those are very bad people. Please sit down. Those people who sell drugs to our children, those are very bad criminals and they have no place here on earth and I'm sure they have also no place in heaven. <laughs> you must run those people to the sea. That's where they belong. And that is happening here in Mombasa. And they are crying. Nabadu. Badu. So please, I want to request this society. Talk to us. We are ready to give you law enforcement officers across our 47 counties to help you shut down all unlicensed facilities across the country. Again, those professionals who lease out their licenses, you license Sasa license yako unapatia mtu mwingine ambaye hajaitimu hao. How do you give a fellow just there to use your license? Kama alitaka kukuwa na kemese ya ngeda university ya some. Aumie huko na mambo ya kati na nini na nini na hile mambo hiko huko. Sasa tu. Sasa wewe umesono na hiwa somo vile hiko ngumu. Mungu tu atoke huko kwa sababu wako na peso na matia license yako. It's very unfair to yourself. How do you allow a character who has not been to school to use your license and claim to be a pharmacist? And this is a difficult course at the university. I used to see fellows who are doing pharmacy crying there in Chiromo and Ganyata. Wakisikia mutiani na karibia, karibu wana haribika kicho. 
Sisi watu na literature na nini unajua sisi ni watu ya juu chini. Unangangala tu na kizungu unapita. Lakini unajua hii maneno ya medicine and pharmacy you know there is no guesswork. You must get it right because you are dealing with human lives. How do you after spending those years all the way from primary to high school to university and getting a license to practice and you give it to another character for some little money? I think it's very insulting to yourself. And that is how we have ruined our people. Because those are merchants. They don't care. They have no professional ethics. They will sell anything to anybody as long as they make money. Please, I want to beg you with tremendous respect as your leader. Please, let's be professional and let us also respect our profession. To jivunie our profession. Don't allow merchants and thugs to get into such a noble profession. It's very unfair to your profession. Mujivunie. Muko tu watu wa tufutano. Why do you want to bring other characters kwa hiyo club ya watu 5,000 in Kenya out of 50 million? I'm surprised that you are not because our constitution is very clear that public participation is compulsory in any legislative proposal and before it is debated and passed into a bill in the National Assembly or in the Senate for that matter is public participation and this society in bills that are related to your profession must be accorded an opportunity to have an input so we'll find out with the minister here what could be the problem because that I'm a little bit shocked because it's a constitutional requirement. And in fact, you have seen many bills that went through Parliament without public participation have been thrown out by the High Court. So we'll find out and we'll make sure that in any bill before our two houses of Parliament that needs to be discussed, that have something to do with your profession, as a professional body, you are given an opportunity to have a serious input on that bill. That one we shall do, and we'll find out what it's about. We'll do, and we'll find out what it's about. Very active CSC. He's a very active girl. You know, very. I sit with these people, I chair the cabinet committee, I know. Hata kama si ongei, nina pima, ninaona mutu ambaye hiko sawa. Now huyu Susan, I'm not saying because she's here. She is very committed to her job. And she's very passionate. So I don't, I don't, I don't find you having any problem engaging her uh, for the national pharmaceutical policy. Give the input and everything, she will work on it. She will bring it to the committee of cabinet that I chair on behalf of the president. Then we'll take it to the main cabinet and we'll adopt the policy so that we work within a certain framework. And I agree, if you didn't give her a certificate in pursuit of um, the new policy of prior learning, please, kama mukiona ametosha, <laughs> so, yeah, so that thing of proud learning is a good thing. Some of us don't even have to go back to school. Yeah, now ile kasi tumefanya fanya, ni mupime tu, muna tuandikia, tunachukua karatasi, tuna, tunaendelea. In terms of uh, involvement of your membership, in boards that deal with your issues. Waziri, I think, is a fair request. I, I think it is very fair. <laughs> Pharmacy and Poisons Board, they should be there. Mabo Yalakada, they should be there. Counter Counterfeit Authority, they should be there. I think it's, I think it's a fair request. Yeah? And I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss with Waziri, I'll discuss with my boss, Tukubaliane, so that when we are renewing these boards, 
mkuja huko hiyo maneno mmesoma msemee huko ndani instead of talking outside you come and make change from within so that we are on the right trajectory i think is a very fair request and i think that one we shall implement mambo hiyo ni ya nyumba kumi ya kwamba mungetaka tutafutie nyinyi pahali uh, ya kuweka maofisi yenu we'll have to work with our governors you know most of the land in the counties now uh, belongs to the it's held in trust on behalf of the public by the counties again luckily i am in charge of intergovernmental relations i'm the one who coordinates the two levels of government the county governments and the national government so is a request that i can be able to put to the governors what i request mr president you can come with a few people to onge to kubaliane and then i'll figure out how to talk to these governors pole pole najua ni watu wamechaguliwa ni watu wa kuongelesha pole pole hatutumii kifua tunaongelesha hapo pole pole so come we see we see what we can do so mimi nimeshukuru sana jua sitaki kusema mambo mingi nataka e, ni mkinikubalia nirudi Nairobi nikae kae alafu niende kwa village unajua <laughs> kila mtu hapo baadaye alitoka eh so, so <laughs> kila mtu hapo na kwao hii Mombasa hii ni kiwanja ya kuja kutafuta riziki hii Nairobi tunaishi ni kiwanja ya kutafuta riziki lakini mwisho kabisa si unajua bahari utarudi so <laughs> i don't know if i don't know why anybody would have a problem with the where we all come from because somebody comes from somewhere and that is the truth and uh, and everybody should be proud of your origin and your identity and nobody should ever make you feel embarrassed about your origin and identity i'm talking english here because most some of you may not understand my language sindio i'll talk in swahili when i go where people cannot understand but if i go to the village what business do i have talking to people of the village English and I'm not a Muslim. Eh? Si hiyo inakuwa ni maringo. This is na majivuno. Sasa wewe unaenda kwa kijiji kila mtu mnaongea lugha moja. So why would you want to address those people in English? Ama Kiswahili. But if you come like this conference, we talk English because tunaongea tunaelewana. Sasa wewe machovu ukirudi kisi what business do you have going to address those people there see you atakuwa ni majivuno na maringo ah tuache madharau tuache simple people because it's good to be simple and let's not pretend that we are what we are not and nobody should ever feel embarrassed about your origin your identity and your language hizo vitu ulipatiwa na Mwenyezi Mungu buri without any application and god never told you where to be born and among which people hiyo ni mambo ya Mwenyezi Mungu ndio alipanga so mimi nimeshukuru sana 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 i want to say thank you very much for listening to me uh, let's assist each other you are very critical component of our health sector and this sector cannot work without you i have seen the the scheme of service i agree ya kwamba that uh, if there is no career progression mnaweza kuva roho i think waziri we need to look at it so that people can feel motivated to rise and study i think i think so i think let's create <laughs> to take as a eo chief pharmacist deputy chief pharmacist senior deputy chief pharmacist assistant pharmacist nini nini weka vitu mingi hapo si hiyo namna hiyo Yeah, so that the people can aspire to go up. Sasa ukiweka tu kamoja watu wote hawezi bebana hapo. So weka hiyo ma deputy senior assistant assistant nini 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 kuja hapo chini. 
so that people can, uh, can be able to grow and grow well. So I really want to thank you a lot for listening to me, for giving me this opportunity. And you know, for some of us, when you are among learned people, it's very good. It's very good. Because those of us who studied biology, there were two processes. One was called diffusion, another one was called osmosis. The movement of knowledge from low concentration to <laughs> so for my case by just sitting here I have benefited from the movement of high concentration to may God bless you and bless you your Excellency thank you Ramon and the bus for a gift session that will be presented by Dr. Louis Somoni and also will ask the